primary ignition. This is Star Wars. Look out! Core world is... You may fire when ready. From the bright center of the galaxy, I'm Greg Skondak, and you're listening to Core World News. Your all-net news service providing in-depth coverage of the latest stories from every sector of the galaxy. Now, the new segment rundown for December 11th, 2022. Kyber Crystal Comics Corner. But first, this news. All right, thank you very much, Krex. Uh, welcome, everyone. Let's uh, just hyperspace jump right into the old news here. Yeah. Uh, it's not that old. We got a lot of stuff about the upcoming Respawn game, Jedi Survivor. Um, all week long, we got some gameplay footage, uh, a release date, some reveals on the uh, pre-order skins. Um, where do you, and, and then we got a trailer, Ooh, a new trailer skins. Let's go. that had a lot of interesting, intentional, I think, uh, drops in there. You want to start with a trailer? Sure. I mean, Schneiki. Sounds, sounds right. That yeah. sounds like the right thing to do. There's a lot in here. Two words. Uh, jungle Wampa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of creatures. I'm into the creature mm-hmm. riding. Beastmaster, you know, force taming animals. I, yeah. I, I mean, my takeaway from this, and then, I, I mean, we all just, like, looked at this two seconds ago again. But it, like, feels like they're just borrowing from all of the best games there yep. are. Like, <laughs> it's got, like, Horizon, like, Forbidden West, like, riding yep. characters. And then it's got like looks Spider-Man. like tag, yeah tag team <laughs> gameplay with yep. like another character like uh, God of War. Mm. Um, there's just a lot, and then just like some great saber combat. It, it looks it, it they're just stuffed a bunch in here. Um, so we see this. Who is this character that's in a vat of liquid? We've seen him for a long time. Um, he said, "I was betrayed by the one I trusted most." And you're led to believe that's the voiceover we hear is his, right? Um, blue eyes, long hair, but then maybe there's also another character named Bode who's in here. Is that first character, is the Vat character Bode? No, I don't think so. Bode seems to have different coloration, different eyes than the person in the Vat. So that seems, he seems more like a, like a scoundrel character or like a, like that. But, uh, I don't know who this person is. I mean, so it says the order is gone and I was betrayed by the one I trusted the most. It's just like, if he's part of the order, that's gotta be. Anakin, Anakin he's referring to, right? Like, well, I mean, or like misplaced um, anger against Obi Wan. I don't know. Yeah, or he was like a fallen was... Jedi who the the Order tried to take care of. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This could be just another Jedi in hiding, or some Jedi in the mm-hmm. uh, maybe went on a long voyage to the you know beyond the the edges of the galaxy, and therefore had to go in some sort of like back to tank, you know. Um, mm. cryo sleep of some kind i don't know there's the great cool. take i was there we go there you go yeah there we go something something really <laughs> fun you know like who knows it could be it could really be anything yeah that would be wild um so we're riding beasts and fighting um of course i was geeking out about the lightsabers um we have jaro to paul's saber still in here um but now <laughs> there's it looks like there's a second lightsaber he's wielding but it's more like a shoto saber yeah, um, he's there's also a very dramatic scene where he unfolds um, a crossbar on his Jaro to Paul saber. So he unlocks that at some point just for the lightsaber nerds like me to be like, sweet. Yeah, I wonder. I hope his like combat style changes when he does that and he goes more like, you know, Claymore swinging uh, broadsword style or something. Yeah, like it was pretty thing. rad to see. Him yeah, to Cal like, dual wielding right off the bat. I was like, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's see where we can go with this. And th- can we talk about the stopping time? Can we talk? About sure. The, <laughs> yeah. The chrono kinesis, the force, the, you know, uh, time stopping blaster bolts. Like, yeah. I mean, was, oh. yeah, right. That's like Kylo Ren's ability, right? That we see. And he's like, cause he actually freezes the blaster bolts and then force pulls a yeah. stormtrooper and puts him in front of said blaster bolt. Yeah. And then lets it go. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Cool and cruel uh, <laughs> all at the same time. Yeah, definitely. I, I, it looked yeah. fun. And maybe to explore that part of the skill tree would be, uh, I, I imagine, an interesting path to take. I mean, there's going to be so many skill trees. Abilities. There's going to be so many skill trees, man. Like, there's going to be so much you can learn here. It's like... Yeah. And this is PS5, right? I think it's PS5 only. Yes, only. Only. Yeah, this and next why gen I got a PS5. Only. Yeah, same. And so I feel like... It's, I mean, for a person who's just like, ha, has like had the 
put the push the pause button on Horizon Zero Dawn because like I feel like I play that game for five hours and I made like no progress in it, even yeah. though it's so yeah. much fun. Is I can only imagine how huge this game is going to be, right? And yeah. and like all the skill trees and all the other stuff. And you know, we were talking about but Grant and I were talking a little bit before air about how much this is going to be on the rails like the first one or is it going to be more open world or, or what i don't know yeah yeah it i mean it's linear for the most part it looks like you're going from planet yeah to planet, but it's part of a story a larger story i imagine much yeah like the first game i just yeah. i hope we get more side quests as a side quest dude it does look like there's yeah. the same sort of bounty hunter you know yeah droid yep. sort of conflicts that you can have randomly. yeah i think i saw they're gonna have magna guards in this game yeah which will be interesting. That's another fun thing. And then uh, the primary antagonist, at least the guy that's on the box, is what fifth brother. Um, so we'll get some of his backstory. That's actually the book, I believe. Battle scars. Like oh, right, right, right. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm confusing. Uh, yeah, I'm confusing. Yeah. Maybe it won't be him, or maybe he's the guy that's in the back of tank, or I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, interesting. Maybe I don't know either. Yeah, I wonder if that could be maybe a. Uh, um... Yeah, that'd be interesting. The back to tank, if it if it is maybe an inquisitor, an, a, a, one of the inquisitorious, maybe yeah. kind of you know brought back. Um, yeah, it's you don't it's really also, see any inquisitors, right? We no. see a giant antagonists. That's why I'm a little curious about a time jump, possibly. Like, could this be after a new hope or like in some He's, weird? Oh, that Cal yes. looks older. He looks a little more grizzled, right? Yeah. Definitely could be. Yeah, yeah. And then I mean, the first game we explored the the Zepho culture and that civilization. You know, uh, yeah. pretty pretty in depth with all the quests that we did for that, uh, yeah. that game, in terms of exploring their culture. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're delving back into the past in this game, like diving into a story yeah. maybe set in the High Republic. Because I think at the end I saw some guy crouched over and he looked like he had gold trim to his robes. I was like, is this, yeah, is this a character from the High Republic era? And then yeah. It would be fun to see a story, you know, from that era interweave with this tale. And maybe that's what the the person in the tank, maybe that's who that is, you know. That's true. So, yeah. Yeah. From that era. And we are we're going to talk about a higher public uh, book um, in a little bit, um, which is there's a lot going yeah, on. There might be a big push to the mainstream with the higher public in terms <laughs> of the acolyte and then. I, yeah. Uh, this game and sort of. Yeah. Tra- you know across all their properties i imagine that they might make a big push towards what was this era of like the idyllic sort of jedi and then yeah what were their woes i mean Let's if if with- they want to build out the higher public they're doing it in like the right way like they started it with the ancillary stuff mm-hmm. with books yeah. and comics which are big hits and now you sprinkle it into the next big video game which is like people are going to get interested in it, even if they read then read the books because like who yeah. are the zephos right like that was part of it yeah. then you have a tv series right with it in there and so like you've just created another generation of star wars fans who have been like <laughs> inundated with this new era of of and of it's Jedi, off the right? books in a nice way yeah I think, yeah uh, uh, some of the legends readers would you know finally be in it's, favor of very savvy how they're doing yeah. the high republic stuff that's right if you read those books you're gonna love what lucasfilm is doing yeah uh, in terms of paying it forward and creating more yeah more, and more I, stories and other mediums now that we've started phase two i haven't been able to stop myself and um so I, i've been reading the phase two comics yeah mm, not so to good. spoil anything so but it, yeah. yeah it takes place on the convocation Jedi. of the force is mm-hmm. the nature of storytelling it's so oh, cool. yeah <laughs> yeah, it, yeah the main the, you know the, the one point that i wanted to bring in here is that um, they're opening up the like world of force users and mm-hmm. there's, they're just introducing. By the way, so Convocation of the Force try. was said by Ben, like episode three, go <laughs> rewind the tape. He was yeah. like, I just want to see this show called, you know, the like, Convocation of the Force. That <laughs> might be true. It happened. That yeah. might be true. It's just, I am getting, happen. I'm finally getting it. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, it is like every three episodes. I'm like, I just want to see more. Weird force <laughs> yeah. More yeah. Weird and force. that's all this comic book series is. Um, and but, where they're going. Yeah. Is too. And so. if you want to keep building out the galaxy of the world, you need more factions, right? If you're going to yeah. do forest users, you just need more than just the Jedi. Right. I yeah. just think it's so easy to get past the Skywalker saga when you just start going out into the galaxy. Totally. It's, it's yeah. Make the galaxy feel huge and then you'll make the Skywalker saga feel small. And it, the, the yeah. two strands don't have to intersect, you know? Yeah. And still I be mean, valid. Look at the success of Andor since we're going all over the place. Like that, that has, Mon Mothma is really kind of the only connection to the original trilogy and and that is like a character that you see for about five minutes yeah you know what i mean like 
and that is like hugely popular to the point where my dad mentioned it to me last week at last week when I was on the Cape. He's just like, Oh, Andor seems to be really popular. I'm like, how do you know what Andor is? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it, Andor right. is more disruptive yeah. than anything Disney's done. Thus yeah. Far. I yeah. think it's super disruptive in terms of like what a star Wars story yeah. can be in terms of like just dramatics. Yeah. With, with uh, almost no and direct connection dialogue. to the Skywalker. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a masterful story. Um, and uh, yeah, great. I'm just thinking about Matt Savage last night. The man who has a note about everything was like, he's like, but there weren't enough crazy monsters. He's like, there needed yeah, to be. Like, yeah, we had that. Yeah. Note. And I was like, yeah, I can't argue. Gilroy heard but... that note, apparently, because he yeah. went on a podcast yeah. talking about how he's probably he he's going to try to incorporate more, I think, uh, creatures. near humans. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't like feel spacey enough. It needed more yeah. creatures. Um, but uh, that's that's a small note. And, uh, you know, it was still amazing. Um, so I'm think, just thinking about timeline here, if we can circle back to Jedi uh, Survivor. Yeah. So Jedi Fallen Order takes place 15 BBY. So five years after uh, the events of Revenge of the Sith. So, right. um, so I would say he looks at least 10 years older. I mean, in, in 10 years would be five BBY. So it would be exactly when Andor is taking place. If, yeah. it was, if it was 10 years, but I mean, there's a lot of room in there to, to juggle them around, but they're creeping up on covering each other up a little bit. And if it's five years later and he just looks like that five years later, that's directly over um, uh, Obi-Wan, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah Obi-Wan yeah, yeah. was 10. 10. Yeah. BBY. BBY. Yep. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, there's it's interesting. There there's going to be some overlap there and an opportunity to get some sort of interesting crossover. It would be fun to see a But again, or a Luthan think, Rail. Yeah, I just don't think the video games or the shows are the comics though. Only in the comics do we see like all the heavy hitters meet up randomly or you're just yeah. like yeah. how but, how is this even possible? Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah it's yeah. true. But we did have saw Saw was in the first yep. first uh, game, you know, so we might get another Saw drop. Yeah, they've established that connection, right? I, I mean, yeah. I would love a third game where it's like Luthan Rails introduced and you're basically doing all this, like, sort of covert ops for the early rebellion. For the early rebellion, yeah. That'd be great. That would be great. That's the thing, because it's like, what what is this mission that Cal has? Like, I think there's talk in the trailer about another super weapon or some sort of weapon that um, they're trying to find, you know, in the first one, the MacGuffin was the holocron with the names of all the four sensitives in the galaxy. Um, but yeah. now and it seems well, like it's some sort of seen, ancient yeah. like tool or weapon or something. Um, but I don't know, like, what is his mission? He's not trying to find everyone. So is he just walking uh, the galaxy? Is he staying active in the, you know, and in the rebellion or is he what's he doing? I don't know. I mean, they put like, kind of a pretty clean bow on it at the end of the last game yeah. like and so really it was just seemed like he was kind of out there you know wandering swordsman like character maybe yeah. maybe he'll yeah. find other jedi survivors <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's a thought a random thought uh maybe your the he, whole point of the game is you have all sounds these a little far fetched of jedi and you're going to find them all hey one happens to be in this strange back i mean hey, maybe on this world, you know, but didn't he like swear that completely off at the end of the last game? Because his thought was that yeah. if he started doing that, inevitably the Empire would get their hands on them. Right. So he, he, he might go after the fly. he might go for the ones that maybe know the most about the fall of the the order. And I mean, he said he Actually, said he, wasn't he, not, he doesn't seem to be concerned about that. Yeah, he doesn't. No, I'm trying to think. I don't think the, he is. The, the oh. funny and ironic thing would be is if he destroyed that list, but he keeps finding force sensitives. <laughs> Yeah, the will of the force. <laughs> the will of the force. He's just like yeah. keeps finding people that need guidance, and it'll like out there, and he's like, oh, not again. And <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it and does just... look like they've reassembled the archives, or like the yeah, yeah, past a new like secret cache, basically. Yeah, I did um, um, get a still of that uh, area, and it looks like it could there? have been um, Eno Cordova's library from the first game. Oh, oh. right, Cordova. Yeah. I part is of me is a little yeah yeah part of me is a little worried that we're gonna have um because the first game was very much um you know the hero's journey right denial of the yeah. call and finally brought on and I'm like are we gonna get that around again that he's pulled yeah. back in and he doesn't want to be pulled back in in which case I'm like we already kind of did that yeah, you know I hope mm. not I hope we start with like the same basic skills we had at the end of the first game because otherwise it would just seem a little contrived to have to like rack them back up again. 
or he had amnesia or like, yeah, I just, that's, yeah, yeah. it's tough. I'm, I'm surprised we're seeing so much of Cal Kestis, uh, in gameplay, because my my theory going into this game is that he wasn't going to be the main playable character, but yeah, it sure seems to, like he is. Right, we need to talk about this. Yeah. This is, this is yeah. what I really wanted to get into, which is I really thought this was going to be a choose your hero, either Cal or Marin sort of game. Where it's yeah. like you can play this game as Marin or you can play this game as Cal and basically you're exploring the sort of like uh, night sister magic versus yeah. the Jedi and the force, you know, so it's. That's that's kind of what we were talking about for a while on this pod, and then yeah. I didn't see Marin at all in this trailer. I didn't. Maybe they're trying to hide her, dude, because it looked to me like so you had like tag team gameplay, like yeah, and 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 with a uh, with a that's right, yeah, a, mode. A, what would you call what do you call him a scoundrel? So yeah, maybe they're like starting to build out classes, and you could have like you know the the Jedi, or you can be the scoundrel and play as the scoundrel more, like swap into him and use the blasters instead. Yeah, diving into like, cover and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. The other thing that's interesting about the gameplay we see, which is probably just because this is early footage and they didn't really, they're just playing straight through, but it's he has the exact same outfit on in the entirety of of the yeah. of the game and the and the exact same lightsaber, except for yeah. having same same colored lightsaber. So it's interesting, yeah, about the whether they're hiding stuff here about having multiple playable characters mm-hmm. and yeah, because one of them one of them could be Marin, you know, like if you can yeah. swap into the smuggler, like maybe or the scoundrel, maybe you can swap into the you know night sister, and that would yeah. be fun. And then like Sarah Junda and just like destroy people, um, even though she's probably a pacifist again, but yeah, um, I mean, I just I I thought Marin was going to play a massive role in this second game. Just me too, her. yeah. My We're favorite kind of character like, uh, in the first her joining game. the fellowship in the first game and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. That was definitely a highlight. Um, so you were talking about like different skins. So there there were um you can now pre order this game, uh, oh, which right. I'm gonna do. I haven't I need to do that, done it yeah. yet because I can't decide whether you I wanna buy the deluxe edition for ninety dollars <laughs> or the basic what edition. What skin do you get with the? Do you um, get all this, all three skins at the well, deluxe edition? I'll run it back down for it. Yeah. So, or the the basic edition is seventy dollars. So not giving that away. So you pre order, you get um, Obi Wan's robes from the Obi Wan series, and but you mm. get Obi Wan's the Phantom ne- Menace yeah, lightsaber. Yeah, you hilt, get that saber, which is which is right. awesome. that's my favorite Obi Wan. Uh, yeah, Phantom it's Menace. really great. Oh, mine too. That's my favorite lightsaber hilt. Hip, yeah, period. I love. Um, that so character. I'm definitely, I'm definitely pre-ordering because I need to get that. And then also, there's a blaster that I think um, that Obi Wan uses, and you get that blaster skin. So blaster mm. skins are a thing. As well, if you so for twenty more dollars, I guess um, you get uh, <laughs> Luke Skywalker and Han Solo's outfits from the wedding, the medal ceremony. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Gary sold jacket. me. Uh, I mean, Luke's that outfit is my favorite Luke Skywalker outfit. Okay, the, and then oh, really? uh, the yeah. lightsaber skin you get is the you know classic um, Anakin Skywalker, or Luke Skywalker um, saber hilt, and then you oh, get yeah 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 yep yeah, that yeah. Outfit right no, there. No, was... Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, and then um, yeah, and so you get like Han Solo's you know like vest and yeah whatever uh, the pants and all that. Um, and then you also get the DL forty four skin. Oh, so all right. The Rock yeah, yeah. 44. And oh, and then um, you get skins for um, B1. Why am I right? What's his name? Uh, uh, the droid. Oh, BD1. 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 Yeah. Right. My initial. Okay. BD1. <laughs> um, and uh, so you can, it has an R2D2 skin on him. So it's just like, it's still BD1, but, but it's, it's his like, coloration. Yeah, and coloration. Amazing. And then that's the other fun. one is like an Ewok camo skin. So <laughs> yeah, like that's for the or, one. Yeah. I don't know. I'm honestly I'm going back and forth just on principle. Most people are throwing a fit online about I'm it. I'm probably gonna go basic just because why sure I the don't, game will have right. crazy outfits. I so. think and people have said like, you know, after a while you can just buy those skins for like two bucks if you want them. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I will probably, probably just spend it. it just seems another, like, what's what's another twenty bucks? Right, you like, know, I don't know. I, I like Cal's stock gear because it's like you already have the flap, like the Luke yeah. from ROTJ. Like, come on, that's the best outfit ever. Yeah, that's the I best know, outfit for a Jedi are... ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already played those other skins in Battlefront forever, so I'm like not as excited about that. <laughs> oh, fair stuff. enough. Yeah. But I've never been able to use that awesome Phantom Menace Obi Wan Kenobi saber. Uh, there you go. 
amazing. Saber. And then the like the Obi like outfit like is pretty dope too. That's all I really want. So I might just party on that and then figure it out later. Um, so Adam, if you're if you're okay with spending ninety bucks, why not spend three hundred dollars? Uh, no, on the steel case uh, hard copy edition that comes with a working um, Jaro to Paul lightsaber. Oh, you know, whoa! Um, but it does not come with the blade. <laughs> you need your own you blade comes separately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All but right. it comes with a really cool steel like lightsaber case, um, and you get it and. Uh, I don't know. So you'd need to buy a blade, and I don't know what the electronics are inside. I'm way down the rabbit hole, guys, on lightsabers and people oh, building yeah. lightsabers. <laughs> and it's like there's a whole tiers and like what you you know use for electronics and custom electronics and fonts and um. So I don't you know there's oh, wow. the baselet kind of basic, or you could go into like Xenopixel and it's like the whole blade will light up and like what are you getting? And it looks kind of plastic and cheap, so I yeah. would suggest maybe. Go no, to, I'm good. You know, Dark Wolf Sabers or something like that, and have them make. Sure. Anyways, I'm prattling on now. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's this game. It's uh, I'm so excited for it. I can't wait. I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, I haven't played God of War yet, but I'm thinking about doing uh, another playthrough of Fallen Order to just get stoked for this. Yeah, game. I gotta try to find some time to do that for sure. I yeah, know, I don't have any time for it, but. Um, it is fun if that time arises. Um, it looks beautiful on the upgrade to PS5. It's a free upgrade if you bought it on PS4. Um, yeah, it looks really, really good. And I gotta check it out. I downloaded it. It's one of the first things I did when I had my PS5. It's just sitting there. I haven't, I haven't launched it, but it's, it's ready to go. Whenever I have time, yeah. it'll be never. Um, but we do right. have the uh, Ubisoft Star Wars game to look forward to as well. So, well, hopefully we'll we'll hear announcements about that. I know it's been forever. Sure. Yeah, believe it when I see it. I know, I know. And I'd heard some rumblings about the Eclipse guy, and he's like, "No, it's this isn't going to be like any other game where you've played from us before." Um, so yeah, they're building their own stuff there. That's but that we know the Eclipse game is like five years out. Yeah, it's like mid this decade. Yeah, <laughs> like, like like it's ridiculous when you think about it. Yeah, it's like mid to late decade. Yeah. You're like, okay, I can't wait. Hopefully I still have fingers. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll probably be able to play that with my daughter. Like yeah. we'll probably be able to play that together. And she's two and a half right now. Yeah. Yeah. Bonkers. Um, all right. Well, so the only other news that sort of popped up and made its rounds, I just wanted to acknowledge it, was there's some uh acolyte photos uh mm -hmm. from the set of acolyte, which is like it's a huge leak. It's yeah, a, that's a bummer. They never let so, that stuff happen. They no, just, yeah, it's a lot. If they're if true, they, this happened. These were taken on set. Like, yeah, it sure look like it. Like you'll see ever so often, like a Mando, like someone walking out of a door. <laughs> like like yeah. you get like a glimpse. But this seems like actual shots from like when they were shooting. You know, like it's not like yeah. telephoto lens stuff. So who knows? Yeah, factual it is. But um, it happened, and they're out there. Um, if you want to go find them. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It looked promising. We saw Wookie. Um, yeah, that's my cool. big takeaway. Yeah, we saw some, you know, um, very spoilers, uh, guys. Yeah, yeah. There's a Wookiee in a Star Wars thing. Spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> uh, some interesting outfits. Uh, looks very Game of Thronesy. Yeah. Um, I've been actually working on a little theory about High Republic and Game of Thrones, but I'll I'll say oh, that when we cover what it. Are you All just right. gonna say that and not elaborate. Yeah. Common Crystal Comics Corner. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Kyber Crystal Comics Corner. Uh, we got a couple things to cover tonight. Uh, we finally uh, finished up an arc in Bounty Hunters, a uh, short little arc, issues 24, 25, 26, Raid on the Vermilion, uh, part of the, not War of the Bounty Hunters, but Hidden Empire. No, not Hidden Empire. Uh, Crimson, uh, Crimson, Crimson Rain. Yeah. Crimson Rain. <laughs> Sorry. Nailed Crimson it. Rain. It's part of the Crimson Rain. And just one of the many arms uh, uh, of the story of Crimson Rain, too. This is just the Bounty Hunters run, I think, we're covering tonight, which uh, yeah, I'm and loving. The, this is, again, the all-star team. This is like the Globetrotters of Star Wars. You're getting just <laughs> heavy hitter after heavy hitter in this issue. And it's like Tasu Leech is like standout yeah. character in this. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> like battling back like the Knights of Ren. Like, okay. like this is Yeah. Uh, 
It's pretty great. I mean, so so uh, this this uh, we'll talk also about Star Wars 25. But we'll get to that in a moment. But Bounty Hunter 24, 25 and 6 uh, brought to you by Saks, Villanelli, Prianto, Lanham, uh, Kamakoli and uh, Abrotov. Um, it is exactly as it sounds. It is it is our team of bounty hunters uh, minus. Um, wow, my brain has stopped working. Uh, who did Bounty Hunters pay attention to for the first 20 some odd issues Boba of the Fett? comic? Nope. That's who we should have probably paid attention to. Um, <laughs> who is the main character of, of Kano uh, Lash or no, no. Violet Valance? <laughs> Valance, right? Well, he's there. Yeah. He's there. He's there. We'll talk about Valance, Valance's B story, B plot. What is, can we, yeah, we really need to get into that. All right, you want to start? Let's start with Valance. <laughs> Let's just do it. I think we almost need to start there given yeah. just yeah. the amount of Valance coverage we do on this program. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, What's happening here? Is, I like, like what they're doing being, with him. Like, is he being drugged and held against his will? And he, I, I love that he's this. he tells anyone that'll listen. He's like, I am not like working for the Empire. I am here because Vader has threatened my children. He says it to everyone he meets. Yeah, he, he's like, no, you know, no ifs ands or buts around. I am not a hero. But that's yeah, that's the only thing that's keeping him there with the Empire. But there he is doing Empire stuff. To actually doing the balance stuff. Lieutenant is like leaning in and like uh romancing him and like yes. holding him there. What is what's going on there? I think like, that was an attempt to just keep him around. She was just yeah. like they like she wanted to ride on his coat. Well, he's actually he's fans. actually titled uh Vader's uh new favorite like enforcer or something. Yeah. 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 So so he's got clout he's seen as a heavy by Vader, yeah. and he's going to be used as a sort of weapon, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Which I, is I, my favorite flavor of Bilard Balance by no, I, yeah, the Terminator. I agree. Like, yeah, yeah, but he's like yeah. a virtuous Terminator on the wrong side. It's a he. It's a very interesting story. Well, that'd be fun if you just saw like an Imperial officer, uh, you know, uh, or you, someone fires at or shoots an Imperial officer, but it's like a Terminator. Like it's yeah. unstoppable. Yeah. Like that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I so we you know, we we've been hard, I, I think gratefully. <laughs> uh, but we've been we've been hard on Valance. Um and part of that is because like he is, as you mentioned, a terminator and ever so often to be like, ah, oh, we thought he was beat, and then he had risk rock rockets that he used to blow people up yeah, and, he, and yeah. it was Shoot just it, like, like massive concussive blasts out of yeah. Blasts and it was just time. like he was just OP in a way that was just kind of like, What what are we doing here? Um, but what they're doing with him in this run, I'm enjoying. He's more the man now, right? And I like the temptation of him through yeah. these through these issues. It's interesting. Yeah, he is wild, man. Um, yeah, yeah. He he just like can't be beat. He has more lives than Cobb Vanth. Um, and, and that's <laughs> just wild. But and then so the whole thing is he's being held there, and this is we're gonna get into spoilers territory because we're gonna talk about what happened in these things. Um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, and they found out, whoopsie daisy, we killed the only collateral we have to keep Byler around. Yeah, or we think we did. Yeah, yeah. we think we did. Yeah, yeah. Do we? Yeah. Did they? I forget. It's unclear. And so by if you know, you know, it's the old, it's the old Star Wars rules or all sci-fi rules. If they didn't die on screen, they're not they dead. dead. Hence, Space Windu is around somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Space Windu. Space Windu. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. So. That story was great. I, I I can't wait to see what they do with that character next. Um, but let's, I mean, we got to go to our gang of bounty hunters. We got to yeah. start with these. The titular these bounty characters. hunters? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the comic that name finally makes sense? Yeah. yeah. It's just like, now it's like crazy. It's like Bosk is hanging out with Forlom and Zuckus and like Dengar, and they're just like joshing around with each other. It's like, I'm like, yeah. okay, this is this. This thing. I mean, you gotta love the you. You guys have to love the Dengar in this, right? Like you have him working both sides against the middle. Like he's he's trying to. Yeah. He's trying to. He's not the space dummy that I think he is. Apparently, I know they used him as like a lead character, and I think it's really worked because yeah, like, it does add to who you think Dengar is, which is kind of like a weird outsider, right? Um, but he's you know he's got virtuous motivations, um, and very malevolent, um, operations. Yep. Yeah, he is basically so in the comic, he's been hired by Crimson Dawn uh, to deliver the bounty hunters, basically. Uh, right. That's basically the idea to double cross. Uh, I think he was uh, allegedly he was supposed to kill them all. Oh, right. kill them all. He's but definitely he, tracking um, everyone at the end of these issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
he was paid uh, to kill them all but also i think is everyone working for either kira or the emperor (laughs) like what's yes or i guess kira basically (laughs) so yeah i think so um Uh, yes which you find out yeah and then yeah we'll cut to the chase there but great reveals at the end but just knights of ren finally some knights of ren action that i enjoyed greatly um that was fun and I love Tasu Leech versus uh, lead Knight of Ren like that. Yeah, <laughs> that just all the flexing that was happening there was way too fun. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was like a swole off, like who could be yeah. swole? <laughs> At one point, someone games. stops mid fight and is like, "You do not get to comment to <laughs> like the lead Knight of Ren who has his shirt off already." <laughs> yeah, just like yeah. Um, at least they're making fun of that because I'm sure when they're drawing, they're like, yeah, so this guy doesn't wear a shirt. And yeah. he's got a big helmet with an eye sort of on it. And yeah, that's just you gotta draw him into situations and pretend that's normal. Yeah. But it's 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 so well done in terms of like it's it's a great uh comic book trope to have like these two powerhouses, our bounty hunters and our knights yeah. of red fight and pretty much to a standstill, which is which is pretty impressive. Or at least I mean they to a standstill yeah. for a while and then it seemed to turn against the bounty hunters, which I appreciate it because I was getting a little annoyed at times where I'm like, I, you know, I, not that I think the bounty that Knights of Ren are uh the the best developed uh thing in Star Wars, but they are dark side users of lightsabers, so it's hard not to give yeah. them an advantage over a lot of other people, including bounty hunters. Right. Yeah, they make Bosk seem, you know, pretty good in this. But in the series, I found he's, you know, he he's not the just wrecking machine that I thought he was. No. Yeah. Yeah. He's more reserved, weirdly, at times. And I'm like, I just think he'd be like biting people's heads off constantly. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I guess that's sort of maybe a different comic. But yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Forlom and Zuckus. Zuckus actually uses Uh, Forlom as a shield. Shield. Yep. Which is actually really cool. I do love, I mean, I just, we had a little like Forlom and Zuckus kind of miniseries and standalone comics, but the more they build out these characters, the more I'm so glad they've been my favorite bounty hunters forever because they are so much weirder than I possibly ever could have thought they were. And I love me weird. Like I, I want, I want, I want. I want like a 20 minute, you like to do the Marvel. We've talked about before the, the Marvel special things where it's like a 40 minute thing with they used to with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Just do a 40 minute one shot yeah. special of four Lama Zuckus, like live yeah. action. <laughs> it's not the most four quadrant thing uh, to do a sort of like Zuckus show, but I think so, I think it'd be a fun experiment. Special. And like, yeah. to what you're saying, Adam, I feel like his first line like epitomizes like the tone of this comic, which is like he gets the I have a bad feeling about this line. Yeah. Yeah, he's like Zuckus. Yeah. Zuckus has Zuckus an has uneasy bad, feeling about it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's so great. Comic. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you want to check out Bounty Hunters, you got Zuckus. You know, that would be the, that that'd like be the Guillermo part. del Toro like, character. Yeah, sorry, I just that would be the Guillermo oh, totally. del Toro. There you go. Yeah, special. if you just wanted to do like one Star Wars, yep. like a forty-minute Forlom and Zuckus oh. buddy oh. show, his Forlom and Zuckus would be amazing. That's like high art. Yeah, yeah, it would be high. Yeah, I wanted to be an art piece, just like. Because I want to see like Zuckus with his like respirator off, just sitting there <laughs> yeah, all a lot of on a couch, heavy breathing. It's like yeah. it's a lot of footage of just Zuckus walking around and breathing. Yeah, heavy. yeah, because yeah, yeah. like his home planet and his natural environment is so <laughs> trippy and weird. And like Guillermo could like just start there and then yeah, like, just have like flashbacks head. to there. It would just be amazing yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I yeah, it, they totally need every every season the Mandalorian that goes past the Mandalorian and we don't get a four llama Zuckus. I'm I'm. <laughs> I am. I am more and more starting Wait, to get, like get annoyed at that show. I think, I think there's a forlom uh, somewhere. We get we get a forlom like in in zero. Is that zero? Uh, is a forlom like droid in uh, the Mandalorian? Is that a um, zero? And there's a triple some, zero. And I a think zero? it's. I could be wrong, zero? but I thought it was something zero. I think yeah. No, right. zero is definitely. Yeah. Is definitely uh, a forlom. Ask. Yeah, because uh, they're just they're they they're, bartender. So it might actually be literally up. the droid they used for Forlom. <laughs> it's pretty close. Yeah, it's just I mean it's just it's just a protocol droid with a an insect head on top instead of a, a humanoid <laughs> yeah. head on top. Genius. Um, Genius. Which is, yeah, which is yeah. Um, I do want to talk about two other things about the bounty hunters that I, again you know Sax has been writing on this since the jump and and to have the an author. Uh, so thoroughly win me over after having so thoroughly lost me, I I am always impressed by um, because I am I am way on board now for bounty. Yeah, I hunters. read all of 
uh, four of the bounty hunters. Yeah. <laughs> I when it re- referenced it, I was like, yeah, I don't remember that happening at all. <laughs> but, no, no. But all right. But in you terms know, they of had all those references, moments. and I didn't remember. Any. <laughs> it was no, like, I go get, back to agreed. War of the Bounty Hunters number three. I was like, I guess I will have to. I, don't, I forgot yeah. that issue. No, just after reading it. Yeah, that, well, comics are slow. I think right? we you get one issue a month. Like, yeah, but a couple of things in this thing that I think really won me over is the whole their whole plot for for the whole Crimson Rain plotline has been trying to get uh, Cadelia back, who is yes. the who is the child of basically she's basically the child of Romeo and Juliet, right? She's the child of the two crime houses, yeah. and she has been taken, two, yeah, the heir of two yeah, clans, Romeo and she has been man. taken by Kira. Uh, by by Crimson Dawn, and they finally at the end of this whole thing get to her, and that, she is, that was almost every arc yeah. I feel like was everyone ended up in a room with Kira, and she was like, "I've got yeah. a deal for you." But that's why she's the smartest person in the room, right? Yeah. Which is which is what they're painting her out to be, and this is this no similar to that can do is just like, no, I'm good here, like this is my place, and it was such a nice bittersweet ending to this whole yeah to this whole thing. And if you've read, I think Hidden Empire one, uh, yep on the, the on this day of recording. I feel like it's been out for maybe a uh, couple of weeks. Month, yeah, a couple well, month or a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think Hidden Night Part 2 might be coming out this week. So I think you're right. It's about a month probably. It is. Uh, it's quite good. It, it is. It, it's fantastic. And yeah, Kira it's... just steps into the spotlight in such a fun way. Yeah, and I'm very excited for how they're going to. Gonna, like every, yeah. It pays tribute to Solo, I think, more than all this lead up, basically. We finally yeah. get this like just on the nose. This is why I do what I do, her motivations. And it was great. I was like, finally, we get... <sighs> We get the motivations here. Yeah, um, it's great. Character. It makes me sad because I feel like we're going to get uh, the entire cure arcs only going to be told in comics. And as a comic book fan, I love that. But like, I think they're I think we're seeing the door shutting on Kira in in this. And that's not a spoiler. There's they, oh, they've what? done nothing in a like a live action series or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think her story is going to come to an end uh, at the end of the series. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, the other thing was. So meanwhile, while there's a raid on the Vermilion. Um, was it Lord Vakora is being held? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So good old Vakora. Yeah, let's talk about a good way to make a bad guy. Let's talk about seem the Nexu in the room. Lovable or not lovable, but like you kind of understand, and that's the Nexu, right? So we get this. <laughs> he, she is one on one. This yeah. was a bit of camp, though. I have to say, just in terms of like the characters just talking about their love for their pets, or like, yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, and that part. As they're fighting as they're as one kills a Nexu. I was like, wow, you you just <laughs> needed really happening right now. You didn't need the you didn't need the uh, the the dialogue. Uh, you could have right. done it just through seeing it, but to have. Lucora basically getting angry that she's been ambushed with a Nexu and knowing that the only option for her lives is to kill the Nexu. I'm a cat person. Why are you making me do this? Yeah. Right. That was she does it and walks away because she's so (laughs) distraught. Distraught. I I loved it to me personally to give a character that 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 little element of like I don't want to kill an animal. Like I don't want to kill an animal, but I have to. I was like, I feel the same way. I'm reading that. I'm like Star Wars characters with sweet like headgear. Yeah. Uh, well no. uh, I like the helmet. I like the chorus helmet. It's solid. Sure. <laughs> but, um, I think you can but, see my thoughts in like five yeah. episodes of this <laughs> podcast where I talk about it. I don't need to say Not it again. Unlike Strife from Marvel Comics. But it's... Yeah. <laughs> this is something I'm starting to see more and more of. I think they're like, it used to be like, you know, Star Wars characters, they fight these crazy creatures that are out to kill them and they kill these creatures. But it's like, that gets less and less palatable as sort of yeah. time is on. Maybe I'm just getting old, but like, I, you know, I love all these creatures. I don't care what they look like. You know, it's like maybe they, you know, they've got a family or something. I don't know. Maybe they're very sweet. But uh, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's I, I, it must be impossible for the writers to sort of do this stuff because, like, this is what goes on in space, right? You get attacked by giant, crazy alien creatures. Yeah, it's funny. Like, it's I, it's really an interesting point, Ben, because, like, I was thinking about, like, Wampa on Empire Strikes Back. I don't really react to that because I'm like, that is a – it's like getting attacked by a bear. Right. Right. But right. like Rancor in, in Return of the Jedi, I still get upset with that now. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like that that Rancor did not ask for that. Like that was taken, thrown in a pit, you yeah. know, like I again, I don't think Luke had much of an option there, you know, but like still it's just like, oh, this is just nasty. Oh. The whole situation. Well, and then you get like in the certain point of view, you actually get the background of the like snow wampa's life and he has like a whole sense oh, of right i forgot like, about that he lost yeah, his I... arm but he wears it as a badge of honor and like it's crazy it is um, yeah 
but that's the thing it's you know it's just it's tough in star wars because you're like was that sentient was that the smartest creature in the universe but it just looked <laughs> weird and so you killed it like right um it's tough to tough to do but yeah this was hard i was like I was like, oh, but at least I was like, all right, well, at least I feel the exact same way as Bukora does, which I, is like, I really don't want to kill this thing right now. No, it made me feel right. And I appreciate yeah. that. Anytime the author achieved that, that feeling of just like, ugh, like just like that was rough. Yeah. But yeah. also that you ever see a calm next to though, they're like always rabid. No, but that's also why you don't put one on a spaceship. Yeah, <laughs> that was, was a fault. house pet. I was though. like, you, you were asking for this. Yeah. 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 And she probably could have called off the next you. Like it's probably. not a crazy oh, creature. It's... But also the next you would have killed her like yes. easily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had to jump on her. It would have just like bit her head off and it would have been the yeah. end. That's why I was like, how are you getting words out about your cat? Like, yeah, I agreed. I'm agreed. Sorry. That part of it was a little like, oh, OK, only <laughs> oh, in a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this is actually where the issue actually uh, ended and sort of um, continued in the, the third issue, uh, basically. Right. This was the transition. It's like oh, yeah. action set piece moment. Yeah, and it even felt like watching a TV series where it cuts to commercial and then cuts back three seconds later to remind you of what happened. We're like, wait, we just we already did this. Yeah, it was yeah. Just like I have cats. I yeah. have cats. I can't do this. And then they cut back to it. Like, uh, okay. I liked it though. I, thought it was- I did too. Yeah, I'm I'm on board for. It. I I like it that it's not. Um, think I think Sax has a really good understanding of the, who these characters are. I think having them now in an ensemble working together and playing around with who's that ensemble is fun. I think it's kind of what I was, we think we were all hoping for when we saw that bounty hunters was announced as a comic, uh, yeah. three years ago, four years ago, who knows uh, now? I mean, it seems like you yesterday. see, you see yeah. like Bosk fight the Knights of red. Yeah. Like, what more? Yeah. Ask yeah, me? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's super fun. Um, I'm excited. I, it's just great. Andor was awesome, but I'm glad we have all these comics. And I was sort of like waiting. I mean, we'll wait to cover the full arcs as they come out, but I was waiting to read them then, but I can't wait anymore. There's too many good yep. ones. I, like Vader's been yeah. cranking out comics too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. To we're, we're closing in on a Vader arc and a, and a Dr. Aphra arc. Though Dr. Aphra is... Uh, here's news flash. Dr. Aphra is still possessed by the Stark, Spark Eternal. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's been like five issues. Anyway, um, yeah, but I think we're getting close to both of those. And then Star Wars main run has like three issues into a new arc. So we'll see when that wraps up at some point soon. Uh, but I'm enjoying what they're doing, uh, especially now that they've gotten. It seems like they're moving away from the War of the Bounty Hunters arcs, which as a comic book reader, um, sometimes I hate when they have these giant cross title overlaps because then their stories get forced into this yeah. we have to we have to tell this bigger story and you lose that character growth and i feel like now we're moving away from that and starting to see those characters grow like i'm really enjoying all of these series now that we're kind of away from like darth vader's great again um not that it was bad but now it's like it's back to vader doing his vader stuff which is right. great right yeah it's they all have, sort of have to compromise when you do like a super story or whatever yeah um all right. Anything else? Or do you want to talk about Star Wars 25? Let's talk about Star Wars 25. Star Wars 25. Yeah. Uh, so Star Wars 25, an anniversary issue. It is it is um, <laughs> there's a nice little opening essay by Charles Sewell because this is technically his hundredth issue. Uh, was it hundredth issue of writing on Star Wars on or the script? That's right. Yeah. Um, it's there's when you read it, there's a lot of like. Moving around of why this is technically the hundredth issue. <laughs> Like, but it technically yeah. the math seems to work. Right. Uh, but it's it's four short stories uh, brought to you by, as we mentioned, um, as we mentioned, uh, brought to you by Charles Sewell. Uh, Ro- oh, this is going to take a second. Uh, Rosanna, Rosenberg, Cowles, Kamakolo, Orlandi, Prianto, Cowles, Sliney, Guri FX, Cowles again. Uh, Noto and Cowles once again. Cowles is the one that kind of comes through. But bringing together... Um, some of the artists he worked with on all of his old series, which is the Obi-Wan Anakin um, miniseries. He wrote on Darth Vader. Uh, he wrote with Kylo Ren and Poe Dameron series from way back when. And so he kind of came back to write stories in each of these eras. So we get four standalone, real short vignettes. They're all very cathartic, too, I would argue. Yeah. Each one yeah. feels cathartic for different reasons. Um. I love the first two, the back-to-back sort of parallel yeah. nature. Yeah, literally the same title. The lesson is the so, title. It's the same title for both 
short stories is the lesson Anakin learns from Obi-Wan and the lesson he learned Anakin or Vader learns from the Emperor. Right, because Anakin gets a lesson on like the, the weapon of the Jedi, which is the lightsaber, obviously. And then, uh, then it nicely transitions into Palpatine, you know, teaching Vader that, you know, a dark lord uses the lightsaber as merely a, like a symbol, whereas the dark side of the force is their true weapon in combat. And I loved that. I, I was like, that is so interesting because it just, it, it creates this depth to the dark side. And I think that's what is so scary that's what's threatening about star wars and that's what yeah. i think carries a lot yeah. of stakes I mean, with it so I, I like when they deepen the dark side yeah and we see the emperor use the move that 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 vader uses against luke right. in yeah. episode five yeah the like, dark side's everywhere and he starts like yeah. throwing objects all the objects at him yeah yeah with it yeah also, I mean, like, I think it's he also beat nice him cleanly with the lightsaber too. also yeah oh 100 <laughs> percent. yeah and then, like you know and obviously in obi-wan we see him use the force quite a bit uh when in you know doing combat i think there's like a fun i think there's just more force to be explored with vader that we haven't seen you know on screen so I'm, it, it warrants more vader honestly like just to see what he can do with the force um, yeah that'd be yeah great. i was so hesitant uh with seeing more vader but i really liked how they used him in obi-wan and i'm okay with a little more vader live action vader out there yeah, I would love it just to see like, pay off to these lessons. <laughs> I was like, I would just love to see more of yeah. this. Like, I guess you do that, see that in Obi Wan. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think about that? So, in the first short story, it's Obi Wan and Anakin just having a conversation while they're dueling, and and Obi Wan talks about having come up with a new design for a lightsaber. Well, basically, you get you get Anakin asking, "Why aren't there more Kyber weapons than just lightsabers, including a Kyber? Yeah. What does he say? A Kyber blaster? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah." Yeah, also, and it was on that Death power Star. creep. He wanted the, yeah. like, the OP Jedi flourish, and so he would, you know, uh, uh, sort of feel powerful or whatever. And Obi Wan was like, "Yeah, we're not about power over here. Like, we're about like symbols of like truth and yeah, justice and you yeah. know, the lightsaber is a sturdy, you know, symbol for us. Uh, yeah, it's an elegant weapon that not a lot of people can use. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you it know, doesn't, it doesn't exude the idea of power. It doesn't evoke yeah. that. So. Yeah, it's just like elegance and defense and all those things. It isn't. Obi Wan's like, I did try to build a saber one time. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Yeah, <laughs> did not turn out well. Yeah, they have a picture of it. You've got to go by the comic and look at it. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, pretty wild. It's, it's like, some deep trivia stuff though. It's like when when the trivia comes out, I guarantee you someone's gonna drop that on. Yeah, yeah. I forget what he even called it, but it was like, yeah, it's it's a, the weirdest looking lightsaber like nunchucks you've ever seen. Yeah. I, it's funny, and it is. And reading this, I was just reading this one. He just kept saying, "Well, we don't do this because X, Y, or Z." And I'm like, "But the High Republic, because isn't it Vernesta Rowe? Doesn't she have the lightsaber whip?" Yeah. yeah. Well, and then I, Vernesta might just find out. <laughs> What's that? Vernesta might just find out. They might find out. But there's a list. There's the, there's a tiny little. I'm sure someone in the in the department went. Uh, Charles, there is an example of this, and he had the right. Uh, where is it? Do. We all wield the same one with minor variations, right? Yeah. So I'm like, count, okay. I guess we technically consider a lightsaber whip a minor variation, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. I just love the fact that they asked this question. This is a question that needs to be asked. It's like, yeah, why do we use lightsabers? Like, why did you yeah. use lightsabers? Like, it's such a profound question. Yeah. Um, and and it's answered beautifully in this. It's so really Charles cool. Sewell is the master of writing. I think he's the master of writing Star Wars. Like I, I really do inside inside these other uh, these other uh, these other ways of writing. Um, like he just he just gets it, and I think that is such a great little. Yeah, he yeah. knows how to get to the yeah. quick. Yeah, and and Grant, as you mentioned, kind of these both these comics back to back, both these these uh, stories back to back. He can write the dark side and the light side. I think equally well. Like he just seems to get both sides of it, which is oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Is it Charles Soul, by the way? I feel terrible if we've just been mispronouncing. I don't know. I always hear. I thought I've heard Sewell, but I, I don't, we always say Sewell. I thought I've heard others, but I'm not I'll, at all I'll, confident. I'll, I'll do some research if yeah. we've been mispronouncing your name, Mister Soul, yes. and or Sewell. Um, uh, uh, feel free to come on the podcast and correct us. Yeah, that'd be great. Give then us a good dressing. Third tale. I love that third. Tale. Yeah, let's talk this Kylo. Kylo's desperate search for Luke after being, you know, out. <sighs> yeah. yeah, great. Which is. 
super yeah cool. and the name of that issue is just or that that little thing is see you around kid right which is oh, yeah. the last lines and i i i kind of loved it because i thought we might get what i was really hoping we'd get in episode nine which was just uh force ghosts um luke haunt literally haunting kylo and just annoying him and yeah, that was kind of set up and i feel like that's what was happening I, yeah and i thought of you too adam because i know that yeah. like, you've mentioned that before but and i feel like that was what he was like it feels like i'm being watched all the time yeah yeah and i don't know how much of that is luke and how much of that is just that like luke knew putting that last little thought in <laughs> kylo's mind would yeah. just torture him right he would just constantly be looking over his shoulder and he's like and we see him take a tour of like everywhere right he's on hawk 2 he's he's on um he's where they first met the knights of ren in the kylo ren comic miniseries oh on the the like the school he's at Elfrona. the Frona. yeah uh yeah Elfrona, and then and then yeah and then also yeah yeah, yeah. and then, um they go to uh he's like to, um, you wouldn't understand mm -hmm. <laughs> yep yeah yeah, he's like losing his mind on crate. Emotions. Yeah, just just going nuts on crate. Yep. Um. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was wait. really. It was, was that a lot what of was happening? Talk. Was that actually from episode eight? But we're seeing it from Hux's POV, so it looks like Kylo Ren's fighting nobody and just like yelling, but he's actually fighting Luke. But he's the only one who could see him. Right now. Oh. No, because they the other people saw him right because he's like set your guns oh yeah he's saw your fire yeah. so but yeah i don't know maybe yeah he, I, I took yeah. it as he was just sort of flipping out in that area i thought so too i think he is yeah i think that is what's going on there yeah anyway sorry let me no 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 it was a good question it made me think for a second too i was looking back up but i think you're yeah um yeah it's just it's just a nice little like there's something that's set up that doesn't really pay off in episode eight, yeah. which is fine. That happens in Star Wars and everything is paid off. It's nice to just get this, you know, four or five page thing that does yeah. does it right in just a nice yeah. little way. Yeah. Very sweet. And then and then we get oh. and then we get a eulogy for Snap. Yeah. Eulogy yeah. for Snap Wexley. Yeah. Leave on yeah. a heavy heart. Yeah. Which like I always, you know, it's so hard to. <laughs> Removing is it Greg Gun Grunberg? I think is the actor who plays Snap, Wesley, yeah. who's like just really good friends with J.J. Abrams and isn't like everything J.J. does. So it's hard for me whenever I see him in Episode Seven and Episode Nine to kind of remove that. Like it always just kind of yeah. breaks it for me a little bit. I'm like, oh, there's J.J.'s friends. He's also like a good actor. Like he was in the show Heroes. Like he's an actor. He's yeah. not just you know whatever. But you know, it's always like, oh, it's J.J.'s friend. Um, but he had that big role in the comic. So it's nice that he got a little bit of time again, because I always think about how in, in episode eight, he's literally, or episode nine, he dies. His stepfather is there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cause wedge Antilles is there. Who's his stepfather. Yeah. And there's just like nothing. I'm like, your stepson just, just died. And there's like no reaction. Cause, cause no one knows that <laughs> other than <Yeah>. us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I mean, Wedge will find out later. Actually, I'm surprised Wedge wasn't at that fire. He should have been. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Weird. That it's is weird. weird. Wed Star Wedge Star eraser. Oh, eraser. I wish I hadn't have just thought of that, but like, because, yeah, I mean, I guess it was like a Black Squadron only affair, but. Yeah, uh, and I think it was just from the comics, right? Like, who were important characters yeah. in the comic run. But yeah, it is. I know, Wedge like would have stole the. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Continuation. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think they. I think the best Snap Wexley stuff was um Charles Wendig's uh, yes aftermath series, and it's that's my favorite flavor of Wexley. Um, and you get Mister Bones, there's Mister Bones reference, yeah. and um, those were that whole series. He's a main character, and he's really good. He's really good. The, his mom's really good. That whole story is just yeah. great. It just is such a wonderful story. Um, but and in reading over this, just or just reading this little thing. It just makes me want to go back and reread the Poe Dameron series because I actually really liked that series. I thought it was really good, well done. Yeah, Fun. yeah, yeah. They they needed to put a well. I don't know if they needed to, but yeah. it was nice that they put a sort of period on the end of that that run there. To to lose a major character from the comic series in a movie and not have anything done, you know, it's nice that he was given the chance to come back and just tell a five, you know, five panel or five page story that really just does put a button on it. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. So super fun comic, man. Totally. I love those, but they're all fun. Um, yeah. 
hopefully things are going to quiet down a little bit towards the end of the year and the holiday. Get some time to just sit down with some comics, start a fire. I don't know, sit next to Christmas tree, just, you know, bask in the glow and um, get some Yule yeah. here on with some Star Wars comics. So I like, like a plan to me. Um, anything else from y'all? Anything uh, pouncing around the old noodle there? No? Grant? Nothing I can think of. Uh, Grant? Just excited for the, what's on the horizon. I mean, we got a lot coming. Bad Batch, I think. There was trailers for that. There was a new trailer, I think. Yes. New footage. Um, yeah, I mean, talking we're talking that. a matter of weeks, right, for Bad Batch. Oh, wow. That's going to be so It fun. looks extraordinary. I'm, yeah. I love that show, so... I'm going to try and rewatch that as well. I started the other nice. night um, on it, and uh, it's such a good show. Um, so, yeah, I want to get psyched up for that. That'll be fun. Yeah, I just have to always, as a person who has, you know, uh, who's, I would say, somewhat lukewarm on um, Clone Wars, I definitely liked it a lot more the second watch through and the third watch when I do it the right way. I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll really love it. Um, the Bad Batch blew me away. So so don't sleep on it, you know, and also if you haven't watched any or all of the Clone Wars animated, you can still jump in on Bad Batch. Yeah, it is a yeah, standalone. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, it's really its own thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fun series. And then um, next week, um, I'm excited for some more High Republic. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'll be a High Republic things. heavy week next week. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. So we're going to cover Convergence. Um and I forget the author right now, and I'm sorry about that. But um, that's oh, Zoraida so that, Cordova. Zoraida Cordova, Cordova. That's right. There you go. Um, that'll be super interesting. Now we're mm -hmm. this is the novel, so we've done the couple young readers here. Um, yep. And uh, we're gonna attach the young yeah. reader. Oh yes, and we're yeah. gonna do the um, and we're gonna do Quest for a Hidden City. So the the youngest of the demographics we're reading. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do that next week as well. So bang bang. And let's yeah. throw in like you know Yoda number one and High Republic one and two two the comics just just first thoughts it does not arc. Yeah. Recap, yeah we can do kind of first thoughts. That'd be fun. Yeah, I yeah I know we're trying to wait for arcs, but I like the idea of reading over kind of um those and we don't have to cover them in full, but seeing if there's the overlap because um. Yeah. They all are part of a big story. There's yeah. there's things happening in the comics that are being mentioned in the in the books. So I don't want to wait six months to be able to yeah. talk about the comics, <laughs> but we'll do we'll we'll talk about them in, in passing or or how it connects, and then we'll do we'll cover them full when when it hits the end of the arc. I like that. Good yeah. thinking. Good thinking, Grant. Yeah. So get ready for some higher public next week. Um, yeah. It'll be a blast. And if uh, we get any more news out, um, we'll talk about it. Um, till I then, guess they will can't be Starlight Bulletins anymore. Oh no! No, yeah, I, mean, I guess it'd be from like the the smoking wreckage of. Uh, but I guess we can't even do that because now we're back in time. So I know it's actually know. it hasn't even been built yet. I mean, we'll be coming at you live with a from, brand new I, public segment. segment I mean, we can talk about it um, off air, but we do have another kind of place we could be reporting from, <laughs> which is totally. covered in the comics. Like, oh yeah, we definitely could, and yeah, yeah, we did. From the convocation, we'll reporting live from the convocation of the force. We're on yeah. the ground here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just got pushed out of the way by the. I'm sure nothing bad will happen there that'll make us have to rename it a third time. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, my gosh. Right. The, uh, the, the Jeddah Jamboree. Oh, um, well, there we go. <laughs> um, right on. Well, that'll be next week. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for listening to us this week. Uh, and, you know, um, give us some likes on um, on the Apple or the Spotify or whatever. Um, means a lot to us. And I feel like a shill now. I just ruined the ending there. Just no, no. shilling something for our Gotta own glory. Can, you know? Vain glory. Um, it's not but selling no. out. It's trying to get, our, get us out there so more people can listen to what we're doing. Yeah, so that'd be super. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate you all listening to us. We'll talk to you next week. May the force be with you. This is Grex Kondak signing off. For the latest breaking news, follow at Core World News on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you and good night. Remember, the Force will be with you always.